Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, let me share some slides. These are not slides of the same. Uh, we, do, we don't have, no, actually we have a, a picture of the mangoes also for this, but it's not ready in the slides because they are an old uh, set of slides, but we are using it now. Uh, probably many of these slides will be a recap of what we did in these days, so it's still good. But I will go fast on this, just to go through the quantum machine learning introduction and what's a VQE, okay? So you know this, quantum mechanics is, co is complex. You saw the first day, you know this slide. Feynman proposed for the first time the quantum computing. We have this problem, uh, which is even the most powerful quantum computer, uh, one of the most powerful, which is Fugaku, uh, is not able to handle the qubit problem. And the Uchiha, Fugaku, is sad for this also. And yeah, and that classic techniques, is you know very well. The gates, these are the Hadamard action. Hmm? I'm going fast because you already know everything. Then uh, we want to build the, what we call the quantum machine learning. Okay, what's quantum machine learning? So a good starting point to introduce the quantum machine learning is to define what is classical machine learning. Because it can be maybe not non-trivial for someone of you because maybe you are not working on that. For this, I, I, we asked ChatGPT to do a uh, review of classical machine learning for us because we, we were lazy that time. Um, and it's quite good. I mean, we can discuss about the style, but in general it's, uh, it's quite good. And we are going to focus on one of the plenty techniques we have, which is the supervised learning. Uh, in, the spe in the specific case, the supervised learning is a machine learning technique in which you have some law between some input and output variable, x and y, okay? This law is f, and your goal is to try to understand the law, so to estimate f. And typically what you do is to define a model, and the model is uh, parametric, and the goal is to say, okay, my model is parametric, and if the model is flexible enough and uh, expressible, expressive enough, hopefully we can build up some automatic strategy to update the parameter of the model, uh, to find the best parameter of the model, which are able to get the predictions closer to the target. We do this in practice by minimizing or maximizing what we call J here is a cost function or loss function which is a um, function which quantify the distance between the estimations and the target, okay? This is in a few words, the supervised classical machine learning, which is basically represented by this diagram here. So you have your data, you inject your data into a model, in this case it's a neural network, just a sup very complex nonlinear model. You get your output, you compute a loss function, and then you ask an optimizer to update the parameter parameters of the model until convergence. So until the loss function reach some target value or some tar target accuracy you want. Then you know in quantum computing we have parametric gates. We saw them many times. And we also know that we have some new tools in quantum computing, so the blue boxes. We have qubit, superposition, entanglement. Hopefully, computational tools that we don't, not hopefully, computational tools that, that we don't have in the classical computing. And we wonder in the res research community of quantum machine learning if these tools can actually be useful in, the, in trying to deploy automatic um, algorithms like the one of machine learning. So the idea is to try to deploy the machine learning uh, requirements using the quantum computation paradigm. For doing that, for example, you can exploit the rotational gates, just an example to encode your data, input data into the circuit, you can use the quantum circuit if it's parametric, uh, actually as a parametric model, and then you can exploit the output, the information you get as output, to compute the predictions. In this case, the prediction becomes exactly the expectation value of some observable over the final state you get if you execute the quantum circuit. It's okay so far. So the game is, we have quantum computing tools, let's try to create, uh, to build the same object we need in the machine learning in the quantum computing field. Then you need to select, of course, a loss function and an optimizer. And typically these kind of tools are inherited from the classical field. 
there are also loss function and optimizer which are more uh, quantum friendly, but you can also do like this. So loss function can be like mean square error, some binary cross entropy, some matrix, whatever you want, just to compute the distance between the target and the estimation. And the optimizer, again, whatever you want, a genetic algorithm, a Newtonian method, um, random output, uh, I mean, random solution generator, or a gradient descent, like we typically do in quantum computing, in classical computing. Same plot of before, but the neural network now becomes a quantum neural network. So you have your data, you encode the data, you compute the loss function, and you ask the, the, uh, you ask the optimizer to update the parameters, which in this case are angles <coughs> of our rotation. Are you okay? You know that there is some proof of utility. A solo Weichtaier theorem, we can compute quantum computing with a finite number of gates. And then here we don't need this, but it's just an alternative. In quantum computing, you also deal with quantum annealers. I don't know if you know about D-Wave, but in the VQE, the target will be to approximate the ground state of a function. And since also the annealer is doing this to, to be to be complete, we also, uh, we were mentioning the annealer, but it's not our um, target now. What we need now is the VQE. The VQE is a model in the context of the quantum machine learning. So again, we want to perform some machine learning task using a variational quantum circuit as model. So the task of the, the variational quantum eigen solver is not to fit a function or to classify points, classify points or whatever you want, is to approximate the ground state of an Hamiltonian. And this is very interesting because it's a quantum problem. And we are working in a quantum setup using a quantum model which is uh, manipulated in the Hilbert space. So hopefully we are working in the perfect environment to, s to find the solution. So the game, I was as I was mentioning, is to find the ground state of a target Hamiltonian. You define a quantum circuit, parametric, was action on the initial state, which is the ground state typically, is to get the final state QF. Then what we want is a specific circuit U, uh, such that the final state is an approximation of the ground state, psi zero. Okay? So, basically we have the same situation of before. We have a variational quantum circuit. In this case, we don't need to inject any data because we are studying an Hamiltonian. But the important point is that the loss function that you want to minimize is the expectation value of the target Hamiltonian over the final state. So the point is, I have my target Hamiltonian. Depending on the state on which I'm computing the expectation value, I will get a value, the expectation value indeed. And if the, the state is the ground state, then the value is the minimum energy, right? So our goal is to tune the parameter of the circuit such that this QF is the ground state in order to minimize this loss function, which is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. Are you okay with this? Questions? More or less? Was not okay? I can repeat, of course. So you have your Hamiltonian, target Hamiltonian, and you want to find the ground state of the Hamiltonian, okay? The ground state of the Hamiltonian, by definition, if you compute the expectation value of the Hamiltonian over the ground state, you get the minimum energy of the system, the ground, the ground, ener the ground state energy, okay? So in this uh, machine learning scenario, you are just saying, okay, I cannot have the precise, the exact ground state in the bracket, but I can manipulate the, the state with a quantum circuit, and hopefully the final state can be a good approximation of the ground state, okay? Of course, this value at the beginning of the training will be random, so uh, some energy that very far from the ground energy. But as soon as you try to, to, to tune the parameter of the circuit, then you will, you will see this loss function decrease because the state is approximating better and better the ground state. Okay, so basically with this I we stop the theoretical part and we go fast to the implementation. Okay. 
Oh, yes, we have our mascot, which is searching for the ground state. <coughs> ah, yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now you can see our mascot. Okay, as usual, let me start with some imports. And hopefully we got, we will get the final solution. So, um, uh, we import NumPy. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see? Okay. Then from Kibo we need um, circuit again, because we want a variation of quantum circuit, gates, and Hamiltonian. Then let me also import from Kibo another tool, which is very useful in this case, which is optimizer. We are going to use one optimizer already implemented in Kibo, which is, will be the function, of the, I mean, the object, whose task will be to update the parameter of the circuits in order to search for a better uh, configuration, which will lead us to the ground state. So from Kibo, import optimizers. And then we need a function to perform some plot scripts. So let me just say from Kiboedu, import plot scripts. Ah, sorry. From Kiboedu dot scripts dot plot scripts import should be a function already written plot VQE. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, sorry. I need to rerun the kernel. Uh, I will be back in just a second. Because I open it, I, I need to do a very fast stuff. Hmm? I'm back in one minute. Let me share the screen. Okay. Uh, from Kibo Edu, we were saying dot scripts dot plot scripts import uh, plot VQE status. No, 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 no. Not VQE states. Hmm. And where we are from Kibo. We don't have it. Let me just copy past the function here so we go fast. We were not ready to do this lecture today, so. Oh yes, I will do this. Okay, let me show you the function. And then uh, we take some time if you want to copy it or uh, I will provide you with the code. So we have our optimizer and everything is ready. Uh, we were uploading this function here. So it can, can take time to be copied. So um, yeah, if you want just, um, we are going to use then plot VQE states at the end. So something like this from Kiboidu. Uh, dot scripts dot plot scripts import plot vqe states okay so you can just uh, write plot vqe state and it will be compiled correctly when we update the function yeah yeah indeed indeed that's the problem 
Uh, yeah, yeah, because we, we were not planning to do this today, so it's in another branch. I just need to update the main branch here. But for now, just, if, just to make you following the, the plot, uh, we can just uh, follow this, uh, this function here, then we will provide you with the code. Can you share it? Yes, of course I can. Ah, it's too long. No, but if you go, if you want, if you go to the Kiboedu repository, you see there is a pull request open it. Is cheating, but there is a pull request. Uh, it's called notebooks. And there you have the notebooks compiled, and the scripts will will have also this function inside. So if you want to take it from there. For now, let me just compile this self. If you want, we can just follow me. Then I will um, update everything. So, I mean, apart from the plotting, everything will work if you follow the code. We define the Hamiltonian, so a function which will build the Hamiltonian. Build Hamiltonian. Uh, we need an Hamiltonian, which is the target Hamiltonian. As you will see, we will select the transfer field Ising model. We already saw at the beginning of the lecture one. Um, so let me pass as arguments the number of qubits and the magnitude of the magnetic field. So you can comment it if you want. You can say build transfer field Ising model Hamiltonian. And then we just return Hamiltonians dot TFIM with the number of qubits equal to number of qubits. and the h equal to h, okay? Are you there? Should I slow down a bit the speed? Which one? No, there is no need. So in case you have more complex stuff, you should do that. Ah. It was just because yeah, because we will build the Hamiltonian, build the VQE, and just for the sake of, but of course you just can use H equal to Hamiltonian. You, you can do that if you want. Okay. Okay, now instead we need a function to build the VQE. Uh, the VQE should be a parametric quantum circuit. And as you will see, will be something very similar you already saw in the lecture. So def build the VQE. circuit. We need a number of qubits and a number of layers. Build VQE circuit. I mean, it's already enough explicit, but you can write the docs. For me. So we need a circuit, and the circuit will be composed of uh, n qubits qubits. And then let me go a bit faster. Uh, we need to build this, the usual sequential uh, structure with the layers and the qubits. No? So for L in range layers, for Q in range and qubits, we add a rotation around Y, a rotation around Z. C dot add, gates dot Ry to the qubit q with angle zero for now. This is equal to right uh, equal to q and theta equal to zero. We can copy past the line and set the rotation around the z axis. This is important because this kind of circuit has more ex expressivity because we are rotating around the y and around the, the z. And so we are also able to extract information around the X because of the Pauli property, okay? So it's just a way to build uh, ex an expressive quantum circuit. Then we need entanglement because the entanglement is important. It's also another way to make the, si the system create some correlation. And so we can build a, a more expressive model. 
So for Q in range Q, uh, n qubits, uh, we add the C naught gates. So let me do, sorry, again, like before, from zero to n qubits minus one, one, uh, gates dot C naught, Q zero equal to Q, and Q one equal to Q plus one. And let me also add another C knot to connect, to close the circle of the connection of the entanglement. Here is important because we are building a circuit that we are going to use for real. So this, this kind of modifications in terms of architecture of the circuit can be, can be important. C dot add another C knot gate. Q1 equal to N qubits minus one. So we, tar we, we control with the last qubit and we target the first qubit. Typo, sorry. Q0 equal to n qubits minus one, Q1 equal to zero. You will see the structure of the circuit in a while. And then we add the measurement, so Q dot add, gates dot m, range n qubits. Return C. So this will be our VQE, a quantum circuit composed of rotations, so parametrics, with some entanglement over there. And hopefully this object will be enough expressive to understand how to tune the angles to approximate a ground state of a target Hamiltonian. Are you okay so far? Okay. Now we need the final ingredient the two final ingredients, the optimizer, but this will be used directly from Kibo, and the loss function. The loss function is very simple, is the expectation value of this Hamiltonian over the state we get if we execute the VQE. Because we want to minimize the energy, uh, we, the expectation value of this Hamiltonian over the state. Okay, so, the <coughs> loss function. We need some parameters because these parameters will uh, um, rotate the circuit, will uh, inject new information uh, uh, into the circuit. Okay. So with a new set of parameters, you get a new shape of the circuit, if you want. The circuit and the Hamiltonian. And then we update the parameters of the circuit. So circuit dot set parameters. Parameters. You know that this function is injecting the parameters into the circuit. Then we need to compute the final state. So final state equal to circuit um, executed. So we execute the circuit, and from the outcome object, we collect the state. Okay? And we return Hamiltonian. Sorry, it was, yeah, no, Hamiltonian. It was a Hamiltonian dot expectation, expectation, the expectation value over the state we get executing the VQE, so final state. So in this function, we can say we compute the, val, um, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian after executing the VQE, we can say. Okay, now, uh, we are getting closer. We should define the, the real circuit. So for now we have functions. We need to define concretely what we want to use. So let me define number of qubits equal to four. A number of layers equal to four as well. You can say also two, maybe, okay. 
and then we build the circuit and we print it. So circuit is equal to build VQE circuit and the VQE function, what it's needed is the number of qubits and the number of layers, okay? So n qubits and layers and then we print it. Okay? Do we have question in the chat? Uh, no, no, perfect. Are you okay so far? We have our circuit composed of our rotations. The last C naught is just connecting the last wire with the first wire to close the, the circle of the connection, okay? Good, now we need to um, execute, I mean, to build the, the Hamiltonian and then to collect the ground state of the Hamiltonian thanks to Kibo, we already have it pre-computed and then to plot what's going on. So, H will be our Hamiltonian, we can call it build Hamiltonian and then we need to set uh, the number of qubits and the magnetic field. This time we are going to activate it, so we set it equal to two. And then we can collect the ground state of this Hamiltonian by typing ground state equal to h dot ground state. It's a um, method of the Hamiltonian object in Kibo, as we saw the first lecture. So now we have the VQE, the circuit, the Hamiltonian, and the ground state of the Hamiltonian, which is useful because we are going to see the difference between the, uh, the output of the circuit and the target ground state. Let me plot the state with the usual amplitude uh, notation. Uh, okay, when we, you will have the function, the plot VQE states function, you can just uh, type plot VQE states and you can provide this function with two states, the ground state and then the output of the VQE. In practice, what you do is to pass the ground state and as a second argument, the execution of the circuit dot state. Okay? What you see is nothing, okay. <laughs> Matplotlib is not defined. Let me import matplotlib also. Import matplotlib.py plot as plt. Yes, we cannot import this again. Okay, now we have matplotlib. So now let me compile this. Okay, let me zoom a bit. Okay, can you see the plot? Okay, what we see here, the ground state is the one in purple with all the amplitudes related to the all the components of the vector. The prediction of the circuit, because we initialize it with zero thetas, angles equal to zero, is the ground state. So for now, we are still in the ground state. Of course, this output for a, from a VQE is not a grid output. I mean, we are not approximating the ground state. We are just at the starting point. This is the circuit like it is now. Then we need to inject some r parameters and we need to optimize them. So we're getting late, so if you need to go, feel free to go, okay? Probably we need uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Feel free, seriously, feel free to go in case. So let me fix the NumPy seed and generate some random angles. 42. Ah, let me zoom. Can you see? Okay. And then we collect again the number of parameters. The length of C dot get parameters, if you remember, no? So we collect the parameters, we compute the length of this uh, list. Then we have our initial parameters. which are np.random, sorry, 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 run n, n params. Okay, so our initial guess of parameters 
in order not to start with angles all equal to zero, 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 will be a set of random numbers generated from a Gaussian distribution just to modify the initial state. We plot the final state and we see what's happened with this configuration of the circuit. So C dot set parameters. E init P. And then we plot the QE states with the ground state and the execution of the circuit point uh, dot state. Are you okay with this? We are generating random angles. We set them into the circuit and then we recompute the prediction of the VQE. What we expect from here is still that the VQE is not able to do the prediction because they are random numbers, not trained angles. Any, any question so far? Good. Or you are too tired or I am too fast and there are no questions. <laughs> This is the uh, situation. The predictions are again the transparent uh, plot. Again, it's not enough. I mean, it's not a good prediction, of course, but you see randomly we are changing the state. So this is the starting point of our training, okay? Now we are going to call the optimizer and to tune the parameter of the circuit and we see if actually we can train this very simple quantum circuit to do this task of approximating the ground state. last three cells, we need to optimize the angles. To optimize the angles, we call the Kibo optimizers, and we can do like this. So we collect a result object from optimizers dot optimize. And uh, in this function, basically the function optimize takes a loss function to be optimized and the parameters you want to optimize. So loss is equal to our loss function. That was the expectation value of the target observable, the Hamiltonian, over the state we get executing the VQE. The initial guess of parameters, which are init P, as we defined before. Some extra arguments uh, just to inform the optimizer not to optimize some of the arguments of the loss function. In this case, we want to optimize only, let's jump back to the loss function and I can explain to you. Uh, 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 uh. If you see the loss function is function of parameter circuit Hamiltonian. Uh, the optimizer as it is built is going to look at the arguments to optimize them. So we need to specify not to look to circuit and Hamiltonians because circuit and Hamiltonian are something that is fixed during the problem. We just need to update the parameters. Okay, so we just fill it with circuit and Hamiltonian. Again, just to inform me, okay, look at loss function, but just to optimize the parameters. And finally, we need the method of the optimizer. In Kibo, we have a lot of methods you can use. You can use genetic algorithms, uh, some gradient descent using TensorFlow, whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to use a Newtonian optimizer. It's just a method which computes some gradients and do the optimization, which is called Powell. I don't know if you know the method, but the name is Powell. Okay, now we execute it. It will take uh, some seconds probably, hopefully not too much time. Uh, probably uh, this is not normal. Maybe I have some problem with the backend. Let me do this then. Kibo. 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 Sample. Okay, let me go down. Okay, again. Oh, oh. We already finished now. Okay. Should be finished. Let me have a look to the result object. Okay, so now we run the optimization. The result object is an object containing a lot of information. The final value of the loss function, the optimal parameters, 
some message like optimization terminated successfully, um, many information. I mean, it's not very important. What we are interested in are these two points here. So if this is the actually the eigenvalue, ba basically the minimum energy, and if these are the best parameters that allows this VQE to approximate the ground state. To have a look to this, we just save the best parameters which are the result object uh, item number one, the second in the list. So now we have our best parameters. And now what I'm going to do is to take these parameters, I will inject this parameter into the circuit, and then we will plot the final state. If the final state is closer to the ground state, we won. If not, no. So C dot set parameters, best P. And then again, we call the, no the, the function, plot VQE states ground state and then the state we get if we execute C. As you can see, we are getting closer. We are getting closer to the ground state, but the problem here is that the circuit was very small. It was very, I mean, it was not enough expressive. It's like a machine learning model in which you take a neural network and you set like just a couple of nodes or layers, no? It's not enough. Like in the classical case, we can improve the expressivity by increasing the layers, for example. So let me go up in the definition and we can just say, for example, number of layers equal to four. Now we have a bigger circuit and if it's true what I was mentioning and so that now we work in a more complex environment, which is more expressive, then we should be able to get a bet better approximation of the ground state. Okay, let me go down, run again the optimization. It will take a bit more time because now we have a bigger circuit. It's finished. We get our result. Now we have a lot of parameters, the, I mean, the double the number of parameters. We can collect the parameters. And then we ask to predict the final solution. And the ground state is now quite similar to the original one. Okay. Uh, sorry for the speed. <laughs> it was not, uh, I mean, we didn't add in, in mind to do this uh, today, but we had time, so it was nice to see a practical application of what we saw Actually, this is one of the most powerful algorithms we have in the quantum machine learning today. How do I distinguish the PE functions? The ANSATS, you mean? So, this is a good question. Uh, in, in the quantum machine learning field, there are, I mean, the biggest problem today is the problem of the trainability of these objects. This function was, this circuit was very small with a few number of gates. That's not a problem, we can train it, we can do whatever we want. If you increase the size, then you have a problem which we call Barren Plateau, or a problem that's also faced the classical machine learning, in which basically all the landscape of the loss function become flat. The gradients vanish, and you cannot train. So one problem is to define an answer which is enough expressive to do, so, wait, let me go to the baby to the backwards. Let's suppose you the huge space is like this, okay? The omega space, the Hilbert space. Your solution is here. In principle, if, if you set, like, if you remove the RZ to the circuit, you, ha you have less expressivity. So you will have maybe a model which is able to cover a specific area of the space, but not all the space. Of course, the game is to find, a, let's say this, the set of solutions is here. These are solutions. If you are in this case, you cannot do your task. So typically what you need to do is to find uh, an answer that is enough expressive so that you have at least 
one piece of the solution space involved, I mean, covered by the answer, okay? One way to do this is, is to increase the expressivity of the model, like we did. So we added some synod case, we added entanglement, we added rotation in, uh, around different directions. You can overcomplicate, you can add different multi-controlled gates, whatever you want. But then the problem is that the more expressive you are, the more powerful will be the barren plateau. So there is this trade-off. So you need to find an enough expressive model which cover the solution here, but not so expressive to suffer about sustainability problems. And there are a lot of papers about groups in Los Alamos and APFL in Lausanne that are working on this kind of problems here. But typically they, their suggestion is to try to understand which is the best circuit which match some target you are do going to do. We are, we are, you are taking, taking, sorry. For example, I can give you another example. If you do a fit of a function, there are some ansatz in which you are sure that the approximation given by the circuit is a Fourier representation of a function to a given order of approximation, k. And at that stage, if you build the correct Fourier express expression, then you will have an ansatz will, will which is matching perfectly your target in some sense. If you have a Gaussian, you can do the, the, the expansion in the Fourier representation. You will get the correct Fourier representation and you can build a quantum circuit which is composed of rotation that are matching that Fourier representation. This is a, a typical case in which you should define an ansatz which perfectly match the problem. And there you will be super fine because it will be a super strict ansatz, like a small area in the space. So shouldn't suffer a lot of trainability problems and you will be able to do your task. But in general, there is no one, uh, one rule to follow. It's just a matter of testing and to understand what's going on. Uh, yes. This area is very common in the lab. Why? Because it's one of the co well known as universal ansatz. They are covering well all the space. But is one of the ansatz that suffers of barren plateau. We are playing with a few qubits, with a few layers, but if you scale up with qubits and layers, you will see you cannot learn. Then there are a lot of many things you can do. You can select uh, local observables instead of global observables. So observables which affect only one qubit or two qubits instead of all the qubits like we are doing here. And these observables are uh, suffering less of barren plateau slope. I mean, these are very technical details. I don't know if you... Then in, in the uh, lecture on fluid specification, lecture about CPU, on fluid specification. In Kibo, you mean? In, in general or in Kibo? Sorry? In general or in our uh, framework, you mean? Uh, I'm talking about the, the Kibo specification. Ah, the Kibo. The lecture about the CPU. Uh, I think we have an example. Yeah. But probably the most reliable example will be this one after I will, we will finish to, to do the notebook. We will call, I mean, this notebook will be uploaded this evening as well. Stefano is showing the, yeah. the documentation of Kibo because you don't have the microphone. Sorry. Exactly. So you're showing here applications by algorithm or applications by topic. For example, the algorithms, we have uh, several tutorials uh, on variation of quantum circuits uh, using variation of quantum circuits for condensed matter. So this is some sort of a VQE, a more complex VQE for. Uh, spin uh, reconstruction, variation of quantum classifiers. So thi those are tutorials more dedicated to quantum machine learning. And then uh, going down, you have Grover's applications where we can use the algorithm that we did yesterday, sure, and adiabatic evolution. Yeah. So if you are interested, you can just have a look here on, uh, on those uh, tutorials and then follow. We provide an explanation of the problem for example, here, the quantum value decomposer. And we also provide a, 
the code, so you can just jump directly into the code and have a look on, on how this is implemented. I will answer to Zoom and then I will be back, sorry. Uh, the question on Zoom is if we can prepare other than the ground state, uh, the answer is yes. I think you can, um, I mean, you should change the loss function. With this loss function, you are mi I mean minimizing something which is going to search for the ground state. Typically, what you if you want to map something into a state or uh, some specific value of the expectation value you are computing, then you just need to build a loss function. Uh, can be, for example, the, the projection of the final state on the target state. And your goal is to make it equal to one. Or uh, you can uh, define a target uh, value of the observable, the expectation value, and then you build, for example, a mean square error or whatever loss function you want. How you? Okay, no tip. Um, no, I mean, wait, maybe we are uh, mixing two things. I don't know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, point one, in this case, your goal is to find the ground state of a target Hamiltonian. So the goal is, I know the Hamiltonian, but I don't know the ground state. Okay. So in this case, you don't need to find the Hamiltonian because you have it. The second scenario is the one of the, in that case, we are speaking about the, um, talking about the uh, quantum annealing yeah. for adiabatic evolution, in which uh, you have a problem. You know that you can map the problem into an Ising model in a specific Hamiltonian, but you don't know very well how to mm, obtain the ground state. And so you exploit the fact that you can have a quantum system of particles which are clusterized in, ne in nearest neighbors, guys. An Ising model, indeed. And what you do is to say, okay, I prepare my problem into a very excited initial state. Uh, uh, the key is just switch on the magnetic field to a very high value. If you work with pins, for example. And then you do something very similar to a classical method which is called simulated annealing. But in this case, you do it quantum annealing. And so you take the magnetic field and you slowly cool down the magnetic field. What happens is that the system slowly find the ground state uh, and clusterize according to some target. So let me write down something here. Maybe it can be useful. Again, if you are late, go. <laughs> Don't feel the shame. Mm. The point is that you have a target Hamiltonian H1. You know that you can start from a target, an initial Hamiltonian H0. And what you say is, okay, I can regulate the shift from H0 to H1 slowly, adiabatically, indeed. And I do that by defining an adiabatic Hamiltonian, which is defined as one minus S. S is a scheduling function, which goes from zero to one, H0 plus S H1, such that if S is one, then we have H1. And if S is one, zero, then we start from H zero, right? The S typically is a function of the time. If you do it adiabatically, and you start in the ground state of H zero, then you know, thanks to the adiabatic theorem, that you will stay in the ground state during the evolution. And so if you are able to map your target problem, which can be like organizing the people into a class or uh, finding the best way to solve the salesman travel, oh, I don't remember the name, Tra travel, travel and sales problem, that's one, or uh, whatever problem you can map in an Ising Hamiltonian, and the energy is your target loss function, then you will have for free the ground state of your problem in the end. And so the, the distribution of the qubits in the device will give you the answer. That will be the ground state. 
and you will just need to compute the expectation value on that ground state and will be the minimum value. So this is a adiabatic evolution. It's a complete different paradigm of quantum. Oh, No, they are related because it, yeah, the problem is the same. No, I think they are different approaches to the same problem. Okay. Yeah. But to answer to your question, I think in both of the cases you should know the final inference. Because in this case is the target in this way, in the other case is the target in another way. No, they actually, so they are doing it. No, if we limit to the case of the Ising Hamiltonians, uh, which solves the specific kind of problem. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, they are saying that in the case of, uh, typically you don't know the exact, uh, the, the final part. Uh, you, you cannot know the Hamiltonian, the final Hamiltonian in the end. It's true, but you know the form of the Hamiltonian. It's an Ising Hamiltonian. Then you don't know which Ising Hamiltonian, which then uh, that number of qubits. Le uh, let's say, uh, yeah, the point is, let me think about it. You can define an Ising Hamiltonian in which you penalize the energy Let's say an example. We have this class. Half of you has a virus, have a virus, half no. We should understand which is the best configuration to minimize the, the virus diffusion because we need to do an exam here, okay? Then if you map this problem into an Ising model, you can, and you just penalize the model. If a contaminated and a not contaminated guy, they are closed, right? This is just the map, the, the theoretical model. Then you need to evolve it, and finally, if the model is wise, should tell you put all the contaminated here and all the w not contaminated people in the other side of the room. But initially you can map, you are, you are right, you can map the problem into the Hamiltonian, the general framework of the Hamiltonian. Okay, we are uh, just concluding the lecture. So, I mean, from Zoom, thank you very much for your presence. And feel free to, to go if you want. And sorry for the late.